Uh, second, day, second day, the Owen Edwards Golf Croquet Challenge. Uh, out on the lawn, uh, Robert Fletcher, uh, the world number three, and Lester Hughes, uh, Australia's uh, current champion. So, uh, amazing day yesterday, and I'm joined in the commentary booth by uh, Rosie Landry, Australia's first women's golf croquet champion and Greg Berry, head of the Australian Croquet Academy and person who's represented Australia at the very highest level in the game. Uh, good morning, Rosie. Good morning, Greg. Morning, Gareth. Good morning, Gareth. Another fine day in prospect. We had some uh, great uh, skills on show yesterday, some fantastic shots, some some great drama. Uh, any particular moments that you that you liked from yesterday, Rosie? Well, I was lucky enough to speak to Simon Forster um, on the drive home yesterday afternoon and uh, recap to him the, the jump shot and how that wonderful jump shot, which was just from just south of the peg, um, heading towards six in which you know multiple bounces avoided multiple balls and ran through and I said was it as much of a fluke as it looked and he said no he, he did actually have in his mind that everything was going um, in the right direction and and he was focused on that first jump but aware that if it was straight enough he he had a good chance I said well his reaction didn't look that way <laughs> his reaction was rather <laughs> it, joyful and wonderful um, we'll, but we'll yes, probably get a uh, chance to see We'll get a chance to see his little uh, dance that he did uh, later. I think it might catch on at the at the discos of Melbourne uh, later on. Uh, <laughs> Greg, uh, the the, uh, the the warm up routine that the players are doing at the moment. I know that you're a very keen proponent of a good warm up routine. Uh, what what sort of things are the players looking for as they're going through this this couple of minutes that they have on the lawn? Yeah, so it's really important to get the speed of the lawn to start oh. with. And, and basically, what a magnificent shot there from Leicester. Uh, and, and it's just getting yourself ready and, and getting yourself as positive as possible, getting your routine sorted, making sure that we've practiced all the, the shots for the beginning and the end of the game. And then when we batter up and start playing, um, we're, we're ready. We can be the best that we can be. So um, you can see now that the, that they're making sure that they're getting all their basics sorted, um, their, their, their grip, stalk, stance, the follow through, um, making sure that we're we're visualising strokes and and you know setting ourselves up for success. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing to have a routine. I, I I think a lot of players when they go out they just sort of patter around for five minutes but I think these guys here have got something very strongly in their heads. Ro Rosie, um, the lawn, uh, how do you feel it played yesterday? What do you think about the, the condition that the players are, are having to, to sort of contend with? Well, I, I think the one uh, that's the one non-variable, they're obviously still playing on the same surface so that, that's great. There's been a bit of acquired knowledge. I did notice yesterday afternoon it got quite breezy and that was putting some of the players off. And I know at the moment the degree, the temperature is 12 degrees, which is a bit chilly for an Australian spring and uh, and feels like 10 apparently, uh, uh, according to the Bureau of Statistics. A little bit of cloud and just a breeze and we can see the trees moving. So um, Leicester seems to be moving in a nice laconic way across that lawn and... Uh, I imagine now that Robbie's played on that surface quite a few times um, in the last 48 hours or 24 hours, he knows exactly what to expect. So, Greg, the uh, the surface of the lawns have been clearly been scarified recently. So there's a few little grooves, uh, and oh, Lester, Lester's 
about to take the first shot. He's playing with the blue ball, which means he must have won the toss and playing towards hoop one. So, uh, Greg, yes, the, the, the scarification of the lawn. Uh, any indication that that's affected things? Well, there, there's things that players can and can't control. And basically, the experience of these two players, it's not something that's going to bother them. They're just going to focus on their strokes and, and, and make sure they concentrate on the right things. So there is an element of uh, ball movement and, and you know, the deviation on occasions. But that's something they're prepared for for this match. Okay, so Leicester playing the black ball a little bit short there, Rosie, uh, having put the blue in a little bit short to begin with. Yeah, so th I suppose this is one effect. And as Greg said, it, it won't really um, affect the players. But one effect of the striations being north-south is that they're hitting across them. So it's more likely to pull up a bit more quickly whereas when they're playing a, a shot say between oh interesting Leicester um, when they're playing a shot between one and two they might get a little bit of a speed on when they're going across it might be slower interesting there that uh, Leicester played a very gentle shot Greg yes I'm, I'm assuming that he was trying to jaws the ball <clears throat> into the middle and that would give him an advantage for the next two it's also interesting to see that, you know, yesterday he came out firing in each shoot with confidence. So it is a tactical move. Um, so it is trying to get the an advantage to the next two. So not only are the strokes important, but it's also that thinking ahead and planning for the, the next stroke and the stroke after. Yes, yesterday Leicester came out absolutely gunning and uh, it was a real surprise there to see him sort of play that very gentle sort of jawsing shot but he's back to a, 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 a lusty swing there and a, what a great shot on the yellow clearing the yellow away from its hoop running position so great shot Rosie oh absolutely great and and never be um never be led by um Lester's laconic style of walking and shoulders down because it doesn't necessarily mean he's not uh, he's not firing Though I see Robbie's taking his jacket off and is looking for business as well. Woohoo! Shooting everywhere. Ooh. Love it. That's right. That amazing uh, shot there at an angle, a uh, good nine yards away from the hoop. And this completely opens the hoop up now. There's no ball in a hoop running position. And what do you think, Greg? Just uh, slide this blue ball in front of the hoop. Yes, well, it's early on in the game. So they're still trying to get the feel of the lawn. They're, they're still trying to get their rhythm right. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to be a little bit patient around the first hoop. And this is just setting blue. Blue's now in charge of this hoop, and it's up to Robbie to do something about it. Well, that red is a long way away, but Rosie, you'd, you'd back Robert more than anybody to get it, wouldn't you? Well, yes, you would. And, and obviously, he's trusted that Leicester's wired it from the yellow, because um, that's what Leicester was looking to do. And normally, a player would go and have a quick look, but. Um, Robbie being Robbie, and I think exactly what Greg says. They're using this hoop to warm up, um, hence the reason why you see some unleashing going on, and um, everybody's just having a look to see what what's happening. So, one of the things that you're uh, 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 you use in your coaching, Rosie, is this idea that you you might get two hoops from a the odd numbered hoop, and Lister might be in a good position to do that here. Oh, absolutely perfect set up to do it and he didn't miss that hoop by much and obviously because of the position of the balls well he had to do it obviously um looks like yellow has a nice shot on blue so he had to have a good yeah. black so yeah oh so lovely for shot. anyone that's never seen never seen croquet before those hoops are tight like there is not a lot of tolerance so when you see somebody at this level not make it it's it's because they're, they're a lot tighter than normal games and they've got to be as accurate as possible to, to make sure that ball goes through. Absolutely, Greg. And I was uh, talking to Kate Patrick, who was putting the hoops out this morning. I was chatting to her while she was doing it. And she had she had the, uh, the, 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 the tightest possible gauge that she could use while she was uh, knocking them in. So 
uh, it was it, it was all uh, all done to make sure everything is as difficult as possible. So uh, Leicester moved the yellow ball there, Greg. What was happening? Why did he move the yellow ball off the line? Yeah, so it's all, all a bit of a tactical. He needs to know exactly where the ball is going to be measured in when yellow plays the next stroke. Um, so it's all part of planning ahead and, and making sure that his balls are in the right position to attack later on. So Rosie, where's the best place for this red now? With the, the blue seven yards back. I can't, because of Robbie's back, yeah. Uh, he's trying to find a wide position off black so he can't be um, moved, um, which is really great. So it's very aggressive. He's still playing from the short side which means anything he clears is going to go quite away. Leicester's gone deep, but I'm assuming that the yellow still has a, a good shot on black if it needs to. So there's, there, again, tried to find a wiring spot there. So interesting. So with blue uh, in a scoring position, do you think yellow will go for the hoop here? Looks like it. As I say, Robbie plays a very advanced game. We don't often see it in Australia unless we have the world's gear. But, oh, yes, you will see well Robbie play, play. This is how top-class players play GC. Yeah. If you see a hoop, and you run a hoop. It, it, that was an incredible shot, wasn't it? I mean, it's, it, it's sort of eight, nine yards out at an angle, and he, he just... Took, took it on, as you said. He, he could see the hoop. He was cognizant of the fact that Leicester himself had a similar or slightly easier shot, and he just thought, I'm, I'm, I'm going for that. So fantastic uh, early illustration of the quality of these players. Here's a replay. Um, and the, yes, Rosie. I was just going to say, you know, it, it's not certainly not beyond the capability and the skill level. I mean, we play, even in club play, we play a lot of players who have amazing skills and I think frequently they don't back themselves. So it's it's ultimately a choice. It's a choice to say, yep, I back myself, even though there's a... Um, and I'm going to keep doing it until I start running these long hoops. And, and I play a lot of players at state level who, who have these skills but opt often and and for, in fairness not to use them because it's just not necessarily um a safe to do so or it's they feel that it's a less um advantageous tactic but if you look at robbie he just does it um and yeah. we've got lots of good hoop runners in gc who should <laughs> probably be having a go in the same way I think that's a really good point uh, that people tend to do what the culture around them is. So if you're playing in a club game and people just don't do that sort of thing, they would, they would sort of go up to the hoop. But, they, but as you say, Rosie, they are capable of doing it. Greg, you, you run the, the, the Croquet Academy. Is this the sort of thing, this culture change, something that is dear to your heart? Uh, yes, it's about setting a standard. I mean, Robbie's come out here and he's, he's virtually set the standard and, and Lester's got to, got to match it, basically, which he will, because he can do exactly the same things that um, Robbie can do. It's just a matter of belief and doing it. Um, the other thing, too, is when a mistake has happened, the opponent needs to punish the opponent for making that mistake. And, you know, there's consequences. So, for, so if Lester was to run the hoop now and not make the hoop, well, he should be punished for it. But the fact is that Robbie's left him in that position to make the hoop. So, you know, he, he's... Oh, bad luck. A, it's a two-edged sword. So well, Lester had a good opportunity there. And uh, unfortunately for him, he clanged into the wire. And as, as Greg said, as Robbie is not in a position to punish at this this juncture, but uh, looks like he's going to just gently play the yellow into a hoop running position. Mm. Rosie, uh, clearly believing that that yellow will still be there. Um, yes, I think Lester's obviously going for the hoop, but um, the idea I think what, that Robbie had is that if he gets incredibly close and, and incredibly accurate in front of the hoop 
and Lester has a straight shot at it. Either he has to jump it or he may promote the yellow. And and this is what Greg was talking about. He's punishing, um, he's trying to punish in a nice way or extract a mistake from <laughs> Lester. Um, so, yeah, this, this ball is, again... So clearly got to. Doing. I assume he's aiming up at the yellow. Yes, he has to uh, clear the yellow from there. Uh, Robbie put in a quite a shortish red. Uh, probably would have liked to have been a little bit longer. Uh, but Greg, the hoop opening up a bit. It is, and again, it's the beginning of the game, so you can expect a few errors and mistakes to happen. But once the players settle down and they get to pick three, four, and five then their percentages will be a lot higher and, you know, the, the, the standard of play will increase. So a tricky situation here, Rosie. The, the blues visibility of the red and the yellow is probably a little bit compromised. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, looking at what Leicester, it might... I mean, what we do here is you're forcing options. Every time you give a player more than one thing to think about, so they, they're approaching it with, oh, that's not where I thought that was going to be or how's that going to happen. We make it more difficult for them. So if they're not able to just say, yep, I'm running that hoop, always a little bit more difficult. Even for Robbie here, he's got some options. What is he going to do? Clear the blue by the looks. Yeah. He's got a nice nice shot there. But where he clears it to will be really important. Robbie will be looking to clear it to a wide position. So he's uh, he'd be very conscious of that. Greg, is that um, is that yellow runnable from where it is? Do you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, but so the but the, the decision making will, process. Will you know, I, I I think it's really good to see him taking his time and and looking at all the options. So the the decision making process is I can I can run the hoop, I can hit blue, I can hit black, I can go for position. Like there's all these options. Attacking and defending, oh, that's a magnificent throw. <laughs> so we thought he was impressive. going. We, we yeah. thought he was just uh, doing something with the blue there, but he's actually just running the hoop. There we go. 2 0, Robbie. Uh, so, uh, fantastic, fantastic hoop making. Uh, but Leicester first up to hoop three. Rosie. Gareth, at that angle, and as we were talking about the tightness, so for people out there, we're talking about something that the, the clearance is less than the uh, less than a credit card width, as we say. One of the one of the terms we like to use in croquet, to do it at that angle. And if you noticed his technique, he had an amazing, very, very calm just swing. He knew he had to bounce it off the outside leg to get any traction just just amazing to be able to do that shot in these conditions on comp hoops yeah very good well, probably not being too worried there about the troublesome uh black ball which means that lester will have a a, a free go at this hoop should he should he decide to greg is that this is within lester's capabilities oh absolutely um Although I, I wouldn't want to be trying this myself just quietly. Um, it's no. a difficult one. Now, I mean, some players would even look at a jump shot because it gives it that bit more of a momentum to in the air and, and, and all the rest of it. But, I mean, this is a very difficult stroke and, and something that less than... So you can see he's lining up for a bit of the back of the mallets up. He's gone for that jump. So, you know, there's no harm in having a go. Um, but uh, yes, of course, there's consequences if, if you don't play these shots. And a little traditional affectation there is that after you've missed a shot like that, it's very important that you wiggle the hoop to make it look as if it was the hoop that was at fault. So, so uh, <laughs> and Robbie goes 3 oh, nil up and, and trundles down to hoop number four. So really... Uh, Greg was talking about punishment early, and Robbie is dishing out the punishment now. Three nil up, uh, in very quick, uh, very quick uh, pace. But if uh, Lester can hide from that yellow, which I don't think he's done very well, uh, he can come back. Uh, but still, you're not ever worried about being three nil down, Rosie. I would be against Robbie, but I'd just like to say thanks, Robbie, for listening to the commentary yesterday and doing exactly what I said you should do. 
Thank you very much, Rob. That's terrific. But, um, yeah, now's the time. And I think another thing with golf croquet is we frequently, and because we, we can get away with um, occasionally being a bit short or not getting the wire, when you're playing at this level, you must be accurate. Like Greg says, you sometimes do not get a second chance from somebody who's playing particularly well. So take the time, assess the stroke, make sure what you're doing, you're doing to the best of your ability every single time um, at this level because you often don't get second chances. And, and Robbie may look like he's on a bit of a roll to do that today. Yeah. He sets well, himself I mean, to a... win events. That was a brilliant shot, wasn't it? He, he he pushed Lister's ball up to corner three with no more energy than was required, but with a but with an, with enough. So Greg, he's got to clear that red. Yes. Now Lester's been in this position many times, and he's a fighter. So I, I have no doubt that he'll that he'll um, come back quite nicely. Um, so yeah, you know, his experience and all the rest of it, he he knows what to do, and you can see Robbie lining this one up now. Just look at the, he's taking his time. As Rosie said, it, it's just nice and sweet and oh, it's just beautiful. Wow. This absolutely is this beautiful. is a masterclass. This is an absolute masterclass from Robbie. Four nil up and he's he's looking like he's got the balls on a string at the moment. I mean, this must be very, you talk about Lester being a fighter, but he must be really in the corner from the punches at the moment because uh, this is a, this is incredible stuff. It, it, what, it, Rosie, what do you have to do if you're four nil down? Do you have to take more risk? Do you, do you ha what? Do you, how do you how do you lift yourself? Uh, I'm not. I'm. I don't know necessarily that you have to take more lifts, lifts, uh, risks, but you certainly don't need to drop that ball short. For example, when when Robbie's just there, you need to go to the mm. to the prescribed optimum, optimum distance. He needed to go deep so he could potentially back himself to run a long hoop. This is the time when your skills really come to the fore. So you're obviously not going to beat Robbie just relying on being far enough away from him because he can hit anything. And this is very much the case when you see international play, particularly the Egyptians, they can hit anything. Not only can he hit it, but he hit it and he left yellow in a running position. So therein lies the problem. Now Lester has to come in underneath Robbie, never the good, particularly good spot to be. But if he was doing it, he should be in the jaws now. Oh, oh I think he's pretty in, close he's, to a oh, good he's shot. Almost in the jaws. Almost in the jaws. Correct. That that's what he should have been running that playing that shot to run it potentially or go as about close as you can to dribble through. I think a lot of uh, weekend yeah. players would be marvelling at your description of Robbie being in a running position, because <laughs> as he's at least ten <laughs> yards away. But that, but as you point out, though, that that is the standard. That is that's that's what we're looking at here, and this is what Craig's Croquet Academy is all about: trying to get people to to believe that they they can aspire to this standard. Uh, so we might get Greg to talk a little bit more about the Croquet Academy a bit later on. But for the moment, Robbie taking the yellow and tickling it up nice and gently you see the striations took it a little bit uh is that an indication greg that maybe lester won't be able to get this blue through on this turn yes robbie's planning ahead here if he was to he can't really do much at all but put it in the jaws which means red and yellow need to be in positions to jump over the ball to score the point so Les is sort of in a bit of a, a quandary here. So with red ball next to play, um, it'll be interesting to see whether he actually takes, oh, it looks like he's just coming out a little bit. There we go. Mm. So, well, the, the, the yellow is in the classic on the hoop or sets up the yellow. Well, Robbie is been absolutely confident so far. Rosie, is, we can we expect a jump here? Well, I, I assume so. <laughs> I'd say Robbie's looking to, uh, I mean, I think if the, the black's close enough to, to clear anything, I don't know, he's just had a little oh. snickerdoodle on it. Cute. A little snickerdoodle. That, that's a croquet term, is it the snickerdoodle? 100%. <laughs> yes, very technical <laughs> croquet term, snickerdoodle. It leaves Lester with about 16 yards to make with this black. Here it comes. 
Oh, Beautiful great shot. shot. Wow. Absolutely the middle of the ball. And look at Robbie's. Robbie's ball has gone right into corner one. What a fantastic rescuing shot from Leicester. Maybe that's the thing that really spurs Leicester on to claw this deficit back. Greg, what about that shot? Oh, definitely a turning point. Like you, you now got, he's now in charge of hoop five. Uh, no matter where yellow goes, blue or black can take care of it. And, and in three or four shots time, we could see a, a point to Leicester and, and making a, a nice little comeback. Yeah, because he can now place his blue in front of the hoop. He's got black patrolling. Uh, so Rosie, big turning point. Yes, and you see the the answer from Ooh. Robbie is always to try and claw back some sort of um, power position, and that power position is to go deep, so that you're able to um, you've got the option to go for the hoop or potentially to clear if necessary. So that's the only real so Rosie, option why, that Robbie has when these things happen. Why did um, why did Leicester play the blue a little bit short like that? What was was that just to hide it from the red? I don't think he meant to, um, Gareth. I, I'm right. definitely it, it thinking was... that he was trying to get across the mouth of the hoop 100%. Yeah. Because yellow can't. Yeah. Well, yellow's less likely percentage wise to be able to jump it from that distance. Yes, I think it was just a, a, a disappointing uh, sort of uh, maybe catch caught one of the striations, one of the scarification grooves there. Uh, and that's always going to be a danger when. Uh, we're playing soft shots on this lawn. But Leicester now looking to clear the red by the looks of things, which he does very nicely. It's a big kick with the, the black ball, but the red slides off the eastern boundary. So That was indicative, I think, Greg. of the, the striations, Gareth, because yes, the I, ball jumped yeah. because it, it hit the ball at the top level. So it was off the ground when it hit it. Oh, oh just, my just... goodness, Greg! I was I was going to ask: Is Robbie going to go for the blue or the hoop? The blue is a bigger target, and Robbie has answered the question five nil. Um, Greg, have you ever come back from? Have you come back from five nil down? Oh, ab absolutely! Like it's never, it's never when you're when you're on the lawn, you can still win. But like it, that's yep. that's the theory, and then it's only one hoop uh, at a time, and you get another one. But look at the ball movement there. But like this, this hoop must look like the beach ball. It's just yeah. amazing. That's unbelievable. <laughs> that the the the, the, the uh, as as both of you have been saying, the the these hoops are tight, they're narrow, and Robbie has just made it look like a, a barn door. I mean, it's just that's incredible, absolutely incredible. Just to pick up on the point uh, that Greg made about about coming back, one of the great things about both forms of croquet is that the game is not over until it's over. It's not like a timed game. So, you know, you can, Leicester can claw this back. Rosie. Gareth, what, we need, what we've just been missing, though, is Leicester did an amazing, the first really strong thing. He tried to hide behind the peg because he knew yellow could clear. But he also put himself in a position where he could run the hoop. So what Lester's done is exactly yeah. what Greg says. He's laid it down. He's saying, I'm having a go at this, so you better hit me with the first yeah. ball or bad luck. I'm shooting for the hoop. And again, then in the following sequence, you could see that Robbie was trying to block Lester's long black shot because he knew Lester would be having a go at the hoop. So Robbie's laid down the gauntlet and Lester's said, yes, thank you. I will have a go okay. big time. And he but will sure, have a go. But surely, I think Rosie, he accidentally the, touched the ball. Oh, no. Oh, I was going to say, because surely he should be clearing the red here because the, the, the black is in a much better position to score the hoop. Or or is Robbie shooting no, so no. good that it, he's just thinking, I, 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 I can't clear the red to anywhere where Robbie can't get it? Correct. He needed to. He needs to run the hoop. It's, he's running out of time. He needs to run the hoop and take that um, psychological advantage. There's a good chance that if he Great. runs hoop six, well, if he'd been able to run hoop six on the right angle, he could then also run hoop seven. Yeah. Um, Robbie goes six nil up. But Greg, uh, an interesting exhibition there of the sportsmanship in the game, the etiquette. Um, 
yes. Leicester touched a ball and and immediately just declared it. So it's like a cricketer just sort of saying, "Yeah, I got a nick to that. I'm walking." And and you expect nothing less from Leicester um, or any player for that matter. But I'd, I'd love to see the replay just to see, you know, just how how he touched it just slightly. Um, but yes, it, it's it's something that all players do, and and it's. Um, yeah, it's just unfortunate because that was just a golden opportunity for Leicester to have a crack at it. Well, 6 nil down, this is... And it, it, it can just happen like this. I mean, it doesn't mean that the other player has played badly. It's just that sometimes this is the way that the, the game develops. I mean, Rosie, you would have lost some 7 nil games in your time almost through no fault of your own unfortunately yes and in victoria it's called the pants down situation they they there's a special uh, i'm not kidding you um the, in country victoria it's uh, it's accompanied by some real humiliation what can i say so uh oh, yeah dear. it's not I something any of us plan to do <laughs> um but oh, it does uh, it does absolutely happen <laughs> well, Robbie taking a big shot there, up, up, up to just position himself on the the northern boundary, in what is for him at the moment a strong hoop running position. I mean, who would have thought that you'd be saying that about a ball that's seven yards away from the hoop? But Greg, uh, you know, Robbie in such sparkling form, he must just feel he can he can score from anywhere. It's very, it's a very good tactic. It stops um, Leicester from hitting him away, and he just has control and, and the last say on the matter, basically. Well, Leicester's placed his blue ball up there, but perhaps even stopped his black ball from having a view of the hoop. So he probably won't be too pleased with that one. Uh, plenty of today left, of course, for Leicester. This off often happens that you just come out and things just don't click for you uh, and your opponent is in scintillating form. Rosie, what's Robbie looking to do here? Just clear the blue? Um, um, I suggest to you that Robbie's going for the hoop. Um, I know it sounds completely <laughs> bizarre. I, but yeah, he wasn't going for blue. He, he just missed the lot. He wasn't going for so, blue. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think you think Robbie's got his uh, his uh, theatre costume on now. And he's he's giving us an exhibition. That's that's uh, and who can blame? You him know what? He he's not a showman. Him. He's he's actually not a showman. I don't think. I think he's yeah. just about business. He's an absolute tradesman yeah. with this. This is yeah. you don't play it not to play to win, and um, and he's respectful of Leicester. Uh, even yep. though the score well, is the way it is. Oh, Leicester, Ooh. bad luck. Yeah, it was a nice jump, wasn't it? He got, he got just the right amount of air, just flipped over the blue. And often when you, you do a little jump like that, you get a bit of top spin. So you, you can get, as Greg was mentioning earlier, the, the result can actually be quite kind. But Robbie, again, uh, let's, let's see some more shooting. And um, what percentage would you give him here, Greg? More than fifty percent. Well, well, given what we've seen so far, it's it's extremely high, and like he's not even looking at blue. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even touch the side. But wait, there's more. Didn't even touch the. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, I I I thought it I thought it might even go through uh, who page as well, just for the just just to cement the deal. Amazing stuff. Well, what, what an incredible is, exhibition is that Robbie tries yep. to make the right decision regardless of what's happened. So that's why he yep. he will run that too. Yeah. Well, that was that was just incredible. I mean, he, I, it, it, the the number of actual strokes in that game were, were, were almost down to the minimum, weren't they? I mean, we had a little bit of a tussle around about hoop five, but the the clinical dispatching of uh, of of Robbie's shooting there was incredible. Now it'd be fantastic to see some highlights and go through, get your opinion on just the touch that Robbie is in. 
<clears throat> and just how indestructible and unbeatable that makes somebody when they when they when they can shoot from 10 yards and and make the hoop then the options that you have as a as an opposition player are so severely reduced so uh, you know it's it, it's a uh, here's the the hoop one robbie comes out early greg Yes, he, he, he wasn't hesitating. It was, as, as Rosie keeps saying, see a hoop, make a hoop. And it just sent a strong message for the rest of the game. You know, I'm here to play and I've got my weapons and I'm going to use them. Yeah, that was, that was really laying down the gauntlet, wasn't it? And then, Rosie, this is, uh, uh, we'll just rewind to this. Oh, this, this one here. <laughs> we all thought that he was going to go for the blue, didn't we? Yep, yep, and and that's just so so gorgeous. And Robbie, he's he he just sticks to the game. We were saying he's what he's doing is running hoops. Um, he'll only clear you if you're stopping him running hoops. So it's it's the game is about running hoops. Yeah, and he 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 didn't think twice about that. Uh, he just cleared a path for himself there, and we. We now see Gareth. What's interesting to this. note is that in that game, he, there was very little. Did you notice very little blocking shots or very little tiny little shots? And any little shot that did happen um, was sometimes stymied by the lawn and and didn't really come off. And and that's probably a, a, the major thing that's indicative. While it's a really really strong tactic to have a very good touch shot to block things. Um, on the whole, if you've got yourself to the position where you're playing those little tiny shots a lot or lots of interaction in front of a hoop and nobody's taken the hoop on, then then you it's fraught. You could end up having playing somebody who's got a great hoop shot and there are plenty of croquet players out there at all levels who've got a great hoop shot who are just going to beat you. So you, you yeah. really need to concentrate on being the first into a running position and then take that option and run if you can. Well, that hoop that we just saw there as you were talking was a was the the showcase of that because if you remember, Lester did play a couple of little delicate shots across the the mouth of the hoop, and in the end, Robbie just took the hoop from eleven yards away. So, uh, for all of the little dinky stuff and all of the positioning, uh, Robbie could see the hoop and and just shot for it. So, a great example of what you were saying. So, Greg, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, uh, oh, you could tell us about this last shot, uh, number seven. Yes, well, being the last hoop of the game, not a nice way to finish it. Um, and it was just smooth and controlled. And as you said, it could have even gone through hoop eight with the way it went through that hoop. <laughs> But one of the points I'd like to, to point out is um, Lester when he was just before hoop six and you know the, the fact that he just touched that ball slightly and automatically just went, hey, you know, terrible sorry, it's now your turn. Um, for viewers that, that were a bit confused about that, it's, um, it doesn't happen that often. And you know, it, it could be just the slightest of touches, but you know, Lester being the, the sportsman that he is and that you mentioned before, um, didn't hesitate, oh goodness me, it's it's now your turn and, and just moved on. As a top player, we need to, it's very difficult to, you know, forget about that sort of stuff and move on. But at this level, you know, the, all you've got to do is concentrate on the next stroke and make the most of the next opportunity that's available. That's right. Now, Greg, um, you are the director of the Croquet Academy. Uh, just does a fantastic job of nurturing the game and encouraging people to 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 be inspired by the sorts of standards we're we're seeing today. Uh, you produce a, a croquet magazine uh, that uh, is available online now. That uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Oh, absolutely. So this is the third edition uh, that we've put out. It's the spring edition. Uh, jam-packed, filled with information for the members of, of Croquet and those who wish to participate. We've just finished our 
new coaching platform, a learning management system for all current coaches who now have a, a very useful tool for them to use when, when teaching new players to play. On the front cover, we've also got your um, simulator, Gareth, which uh, has complete links to, to try out. You might want to talk about that just quickly. Oh, well, it's just a, a little work in progress at the moment, just something that will help people understand the game of croquet by being able to play it on their computer. Uh, as I said, it's a work in progress and uh, you can play golf croquet and gate ball at the moment. Uh, great for going through tactical situations with your coach, great for experimenting with different lines of play. Uh, and uh, the address and everything is in the Croquet magazine. Now, Greg, if people want to get the Croquet magazine, how the, is there a, the, it, can they just go to the Australian Croquet website and, and find it from there? Uh, absolutely. So, yes, yeah, Australian Croquet website, go to uh, news, and it'll be under the uh, online magazine section. Click on the link and, um, yeah, treat yourself to... Uh, 30 pages of, of valuable information and, and videos and promotional activity. Yeah, the, the links are on Facebook as well, aren't they? So if uh, if people go to the, the Croquet, uh, Australian Croquet Facebook pages, is, is, is it there? Yes, absolutely. Uh, are we able to look at the next pages or we've just got the cover? Um, I'm, uh, hopefully we w might be able to see um, maybe one of the videos that, that are linked in there or maybe, as you say, uh, some of the other pages within the magazine. Uh, but while we're working out whether or not that's possible, uh, could you tell us a little bit about what the Academy can do for, for clubs? So if there's any players watching who would like their club to, to, to access what the Academy can offer, what sort of things can they expect? Yes, well, the Academy is, is all about service and support to the club members and, and um, organisations for Croquet. So we're building a, a whole platform of resources and tools um, that are available to use and, and basically giving some direction and, and some, um, some well, direction as far as getting everyone um, thinking about improvement. Uh, Academy is all about this is where we are, this is where we want to be, this is what we need to do and and making sure that um, everyone benefits from the experience and knowledge of those around us. So for example in the coaching, um, we, we do have our coaching directors of each state, uh, they've got our national coaching program uh, and, and it's all about making sure that it's the best it can be and, and uh, providing those resources for those coaches to perform at, at the highest level. Um, as far as a club organisation is concerned, um, there are many things that, that, um, that, that can be used as far as marketing, um, grants and sponsorship and, and all that. So basically we're, we're looking at all avenues to to ensure that um, we can function um, in those in those fields. Yeah, it's a it's a fantastic to have the the academy as something that can support the development of croquet players and of course the development of the the sport in general too. So the first game seven nil to Robert uh, Rosie. How does uh, how does Leicester bounce back from from this sort of thing? What's what's how, how do you how do you come back from a, a a bit of a drubbing like that? Oh, I, in fairness, I, I don't think Leicester would be overly concerned. Um, the Leicester, what it is too, it's also an opportunity whereby Leicester's now seen what Robbie's forms like today. Um, he knows exactly what to expect the next time he meets Robbie. Um, he's aware that Stephen also watched the game. So there's, um, you'll find these players are at such level that while they don't appreciate <laughs> that, that sort of thing happening, error-free or basically error-free games on Robbie's part isn't that unusual. So um, what they need to be is incredibly strategic and incredibly accurate in terms of what they do. So 
taking um, definitely taking, as Greg said, um, notice of the fact that when Robbie goes deep, he has control. It's a it's a control point, and that you know that if he sees a hoop, he's going to run it. So you need to be always be thinking about making sure he doesn't have any easy access from any distance at at seeing that hoop. So. If you're going to do a little blocking shot, it better be right because that's the only way you're going to stop him having a go. Yeah. So is is the way that you would play Robbie in this form that you, if you can see the hoop, you're just going to have a go for it because that's that's really the only way you're going to be able to beat him in this form. You you have to make the hoop before he does. Is that is that what you do? Correct. 100 yeah. percent and and it's always the same i mean uh, in ac when you play robbie as well the attitude is that you're unlikely to get an error but if you do you better well get a break off it and you better make sure you leave a great leave so that you have control because the minute you're in a position where he is able to display his extraordinary skill then you know you're behind the eight ball so if you see the hoop before he does Make sure your hoop running skills are really good and practiced. You must have a go. Yeah. So the and and when you talk about being able to see the hoop, I mean, how far are we talking here? I mean, seven yards seems to be almost a formality for players of of your your and Greg's standard. But what about you know like eleven yards away, fourteen yards away? Are you still considering that to be? that you can see the hoop? Well, yes, as you saw with Robbie, he is. And I suppose the only thing that that makes you really seriously look at the percentage chances is the angle. So that in these hoops really, really affect what your decision-making is likely to be because of the way they're designed and the way they're set into the law. And the angle um, plays a huge part in what you do. So yep. um, seven yards is the norm, um, 11 yards, there's nothing much in it. And you know that he's going to have a go. And again, if you watch some videos on YouTube of the most successful players, the most successful players have honed this ability to hone in on the hoop and make sure they're running hoops. Yep. Well, Greg, we have had uh, two full rounds of the competition, so six games. Uh, Robert is unbeaten on four. Um, Stephen is is yet to win a game. Uh, what uh, do you think? This is a fair reflection of of how the, the the tournament has gone so far. Yes, well, the the standard of play from has been it's an international comp. Competition and and they've um, they've played extremely well, but you know it's still there's still games to be played and this can be turned around quite quickly. So it's still anybody's match, but obviously Robert is is standing out as the favourite. Uh, but there's no reason why Leicester can't challenge him by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a, a a nice opening shot there. Uh, if it was the opening shot, I think uh, it's unusual to see the black ball going in first. I don't know whether they're they're just uh, warming up. I think they're just warming up. Yeah. <laughs> Thought maybe uh, uh, yesterday I made the mistake of thinking that each player had their own uh, balls to play with, uh, but uh, because of the course we're we're running under very very strict COVID safe uh, regulations, and uh, we're very very lucky uh, to be able to have the opportunity to stage this prestigious event, the Owen Edwards Golf Croquet Challenge, uh, under the current climate. And uh, I should give a massive shout out to Ian and Kate Peterson for the, the incredible work that they have done in organising, staging this, this tournament. Because the as you can imagine, when you have all the regulations and all the little nuances around what people are and aren't allowed to do, uh, it makes it very difficult to organise a top class tournament uh, like this. So massive gratitude to them and also to the authorities that have let this tournament go ahead. So uh, Stephen Forster, of course, wasn't playing in the first game this morning, so he's entitled to a five minute warm up. Um, 
as a as an association croquet player, he's probably got a little routine that he 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 uses for that warm up. Rosie, is it any different when you when you're doing the warm up for a GC game versus an AC game? Do you have a different little drill that you do? Um. Well, yes, because you don't really need to gauge the the um, the lawn, the surface, and and uh, speed uh, in terms of two ball strokes. So um, you don't often have to use a two ball stroke in GC, and sometimes it's a pleasure to do it when you're an AC player and you you're reasonably adept at it. But uh, most people have this um, have a routine that's very similar to what Stephen's doing now, and that is to to judge and get the feel of the lawn, the weight of the shots by going around the hoops and to also run the hoops, hopefully, um, and uh, and just get that whole idea. The most accurate, obviously, the most important shot is obviously single ball shot in GC, and that is the clearing shot. You'll find also that Stephen will probably do a couple of short um what we call rokes, and he'll try to centre ball them. So he gets into that feeling, that swing, this is what's coming up now, whereby he really wants to hit a ball, centre ball, so that the front ball goes a long way and the back ball stays somewhere near and useful position for him near a hoop. So it's like yeah, he's done, absolutely. ready to go. The, 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 the bread and butter shot of golf croquet, as Rosie said, a... Uh, a clearance shot that allows your ball to stay in the vicinity of of the target ball. So, Greg, uh, the the sort of pattern of a golf croquet game uh, for those viewers who are not uh, familiar with with it, uh, you, you were saying that you have a uh, some easy guides to how the game is played. Uh, are those things that people can access and that maybe you can explain? Yes, well, just the basics of um, obviously you, you do the toss and blue always starts the match as we've seen just now. So blue has got a, a nice hit position to start with. The sequence of blue, red, black, yellow. So no matter in golf croquet, that's, all, that's always the, the case. Obviously we know that there's two teams. Stephen's playing the the blue and the black, and Leicester's got the red and yellow, and and virtually there is a played in the sequence, and the first to get to seven is obviously the winner. But um, it's a combination, and it's really interesting. It is attack and defend. You know, players have options, and you know you can either go for go for the hoop or hit the ball, or you can block and and plan ahead. So the strategy behind the game. Um, it, it, it can be, it's a lot more complex than people realise. Um, but the, the beautiful thing with, with all of this is that you've, you've got a, uh, an opportunity to, to take charge and, and really enjoy yourself. Yep, so as Greg was saying, this is hoop one, which is played running from left to right as we're looking at it, and Stephen going through in that direction and taking the, the first hoop. So uh, red will be the next to play up to hoop two, which is in the far right uh, off our screen at the moment. And Lester strokes the ball beautifully up towards there. He'll be wanting to stay a little bit shorter than where he's gone. So slightly over hit, Rosie. Yes, but like we all often say, um, yes, ideally you want to land right in front of the hoop so that you're the first person having a go. I suppose we often comfort ourselves when we go a little bit fast is that it's quite what we call a strong defensive position. So as you see, he has a chance to clear the first ball up there if he needs to, if it's in sequence, as Greg was um, um, talking about. So while it's not ideal, um, it's not horrendous to necessarily be just past the hoop. It is with the second and ball you really wanted to be there. Yeah. So if, it, as Rosie was saying, if the, the second ball comes in nice in a nice running position and the first ball can clear the opposition, then all is fine. Uh, is, Greg, is that yellow ball uh, a, a runner there? Well, if we take the last game, yes. Um, yes, both <laughs> players can run that quite nicely. Yeah. 
So um, it'll be interesting to see what Stephen's looking at here, whether it is the, the yellow or the hoop, or whether he's going to get a position. Mm. So he's got some choices. It looks like he was aiming for the yellow, and he has missed the yellow on the right-hand side. So Rosie, a, uh, a clearing shot expected here with the red, I suppose. Well, yes, and and Lester's got an amazingly crisp um, clearing shot. He will centre ball black, and it will end up down near. He will prove me wrong every time he takes a shot. But normally, <laughs> he would he would centre ball that, and red would have stayed very close to the vicinity of of hoop two. Yes, Lester will be a little bit disappointed with that one. It's almost like the balls have gone in the opposite way to which he would have intended. Uh, but uh, even so, uh, the yellow ball is is uh, unchallenged in front of the hoop for the moment and the onus is on Stephen to clear it. Uh, Greg, uh, this is... Uh, sorry, Rosie? I was just going to say, I've, I've got some form information about Stephen too. In, in my discussion with him uh, yesterday afternoon, he, he's clutched his side a couple of times and he tells me that's because his wife made him pull out an agave plant uh, during the week and he's actually, <laughs> oh, nice shot. He's actually Beautiful torn shot. his intercostal muscles between his ribs. So, <laughs> um, well, it's a, he, it's a great, he wasn't using great... it as an excuse, but he was saying that, yes, that's what, the clutching of his sides, I said, was that because of his uh, um, jocular um, demeanour? He said no, <laughs> not at all. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, gar gardening and croquet often don't go together, do they? <laughs> so the, so uh, been there, done that myself. Uh, but um, Stephen's balls both now on the northern boundary, wrong side of the hoop and Lester sitting quite nicely uh, with his yellow in front. So, a bit of discussion Steve between the players. Stephen what do you think that's about, Greg? Well, I'll just give you some history on Stephen. I mean, he might be new to golf croquet, but I mean, he started when he was 10 years of age, um, which is, you know, nearly 45 years ago, represented his country 20 times, um, captained his state 16 times, like he's no stranger to this environment and, you know, the skill level that he has, there's no question that, you know, he can come back from here and, and from, you know, the results are not a true indication of his skill. So, yeah. um, you know, we can expect Correct. some, some big things in this game. Yes. I mean, yesterday he was very unlucky to to, to go down in a couple of the games and, and it was in, he was incredibly competitive so uh, he, he will really uh, the, the other the other players will be very wary of him today oh, and his... they're all very jealous of his jump shot I can tell you it was just yeah. <laughs> but perhaps not so jealous of the, not so jealous of the dance I don't, I'm not sure about that <laughs> so Leicester will have uh, a, an opportunity to take hoop two should be a regulation shot for him let's not put the curse on him though and we didn't that's i think that's the first time we've commentated and not put the curse on somebody so uh the planets have realigned one all and so rosie uh, just switched in for the for Yep. Yes, so the, the, the viewers that have just switched in for the first time, you would have noticed that a clip was put onto the top of the hoop. That is to indicate that that score, that hoop has been scored. So obviously, when we have seven clips, the game is over. So yeah, when we see the yellow clip, we know that the the red and yellow team have scored the point. So uh, that's uh, after an hour on the lawns that's the first hoop Lester has made this morning uh, so uh, it's he'll be pleased to have seen that one rattle through and of course there's Stephen in a very nice uh, very nice position uh, to take hoop number three if he's still there after Lester's played this yellow ball Lester shoots 
and misses. So uh, Stephen will have a go at hoop number three. Now, uh, some viewers have asked why the uh, hoop number three has a red top on it. Rosie, is there a reason for why hoop number three is red? Now, now this is, um, I think it's because it's the last hoop. So it's the last hoop of the game. It's hoop 13. But I'm sure Greg will be able to uh, clarify. Um, I always think it's lovely that they shift the red hoop around as being as a predominantly AC player in the past. So, Greg, is that correct? Is it because it's hoop 13? Uh, absolutely. Um, it is the last hoop of the game. And where Leicester has just played his stroke, that's the side that you would run the hoop. Um, for the last hoop so um, hopefully we get to see the players get to hoop 13 because it is a an exciting finish when players are six all and they're battling it out and one shot can determine whether a player wins or loses that match so it just makes it um, far more entertaining when the, the players are level at the end I certainly would be interested to know at what stage the decision was made to make hoop number three, the red one, because of course, as Rosie points out in, in association croquet, which is the more traditional uh, version of the game, uh, that red hoop is actually at number five. So at some stage, someone must have said, I know, let's move the, the red hoop so that it's the final hoop. And uh, some other people might have said, oh, yes, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Um, and then it must have become part of the laws. So interesting how these things develop. But uh, Stephen now sh taking out the red beautifully. Great shot and dispatching it nicely. Very, very uh, smooth and uh, effective uh, stroke from him. So while we've been chatting about hoop colours, this hoop number four is the, the uh, position around here has been developing and it's red to play. So Rosie, black looks threatening and might be taken out. Uh, yeah, and obviously you can see that they're, they're adapting to each other's skill level in this game. So it's, it's obviously a little bit uh, uh, different to the previous game. So we're looking at, um, uh, yeah, I can't see how much he can see of black. Is he going to trickle? Yeah, nice shot. Nice idea. Well, it's an interesting one. Unfortunately, didn't it's an go through far one. enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, Greg, uh, the, the the red ball has gone into the hoop, but that's actually not in a running position, is it? Uh, maybe you could explain to us why that isn't runnable. Um, coming from the non-playing side, so we'll just just see whether um, what Black is going to do here. Oh, he's taking his time. That looks like he's being distracted. Yeah, he's... <clears throat> Side style jump, maybe. Uh, oh, oh shot! Great. Well, you don't often see a, a although actually, as Rosie was pointing out yesterday, people um, do do side style for jumps, don't they, Rosie? Yes, in GC, it's not unusual to see um, quite a lot of people doing it. I, I'm I'm always impressed because. Uh, you know, not working down the centre of your body, I, I think it's extraordinary skill to be able to to do side style jumping. And I've seen some very successful side style jumpers. Having said that, you don't see very much of it at the absolute um, optimum level. Um, but yes, I think it's amazing that people can do it. I think it's great. Oh, a lovely, strong shot from Leicester there. Absolutely authoritative clunk of the the mallet on the ball and then another clunk as the the striker ball hits uh and you know just dispatching it off to the western boundary here's a replay of this wonderful little side style jump just clips it over i guess if he was greedy he'd have said i really didn't want to put the red out it would have been nice if the red had stayed in the jaws greg would have been handy yes so, very important shot here, Rosie. Uh, the, the yellow surely has to be dispatched. You would think so, 100%. And I certainly wouldn't be backing myself 
to play any sort of a blocking shot from this distance on this surface. So, yep, no. it needs to be dispatched, and then we need to reset for this hoop again. So about eight yards for Stephen to make this shot. Oh, agonizingly to the right. Now, would you do any fancy stuff here, Greg? I mean, you, do you just make the hoop, or would you think causing is that something that's a possibility? At this point, I would be, if it was myself, I'd just take him the hoop. So he's played it beautifully yep. down to the next. Oh, well. look so at that. Now. Oh, it's curving in. You couldn't, could not ask for better. No. Right. So, okay. Um, let's, let, yes. Yep. Let's. Let's not worry about the jawsing. When you can play a shot like that and get up to the next hoop anyway, then why would you bother? So, Rosie, a great shot. Yes, and as Greg says, these guys um, have the control. When you're running a hoop from a metre and a half out, for example, yard and a bit or whatever distance that was, you can still do those great, great shots um, whereby you don't need to jaws. Um, he had not very much angle. He what didn't. It wasn't big distance, um, and Lester's well capable of getting them to uh, right up to where it um, needed to be. But it's a beautiful shot. Nice target for uh, um, Stephen. Yep, and uh, he was sort of. I don't know whether he was half going for the hoop, half going for the yellow there, but he's he scuttled across the the front of hoop six and now Lester just puts Great. in yet another intimidating runner ball and uh that's another thing for Stephen to cope with so he's got to get rid of that yellow 14 yards away shoots and this time misses to the right so Less a good chance now to level up the scores at three all. <laughs> and through he goes. So, so Greg, uh, hoop number seven, which is going to be in the top right-hand corner of our screen, uh, any special tactics for this one? It's a little bit shorter uh, than the approach to it is a little bit shorter. Where would you want to be? Where that blue is now? Well, he's, he's done extremely well to put it there in those conditions. So, yes, we, we want to um, make sure that we make Leicester hit us to start with, um, which is which is what he's achieved, which is very, very good. So Leicester's obviously planning to hit blue with his yellow ball. So he's looking to run the hoop with red. Stephen coming in to get another fine position. yellow ball of course the ball that made the previous hoop and invariably is on that line in the center so the the ball that made hoop six is nearly always where Leicester is now and he shoots and he gets enough of the blue to displace it from the running position and that leaves red now with the the shot at the hoop riding of course that blue doesn't move it Rosie, is there, is there any option for blue here other than to just clear the red, or would you think of blocking? Oh, well, red's playing next, so red's definitely running that hoop, would be in my mind. So the idea when you clear the red would be to promote it to a, to a, a disadvantageous position and put yourself in a great spot. So clearing it exact. oh, Stephen was trying to clear it obviously to the left if you're coming back the other way and make sure his ball was still in a runner position on the boundary um it was a right a right way to clear it he wasn't just clearing it he was trying to clear it with some intent so unfortunately missed and now we see lester going for what should be a reasonably easy hoop well done and, and promoting gets, it down gets, the bottom yeah yeah beautiful shot by lester really strong and and of course having lost the first game so quickly and so definitively to to robbie uh it's, he must be feeling really good about coming out and cleanly making these these hoops with uh with, with such confidence yes so definitely. a bit of discussion um, between the, the players here 
not sure what this discussion is about, but um, it'll be less to the play. You can see there that maybe the red can't see the black. And for that reason, Lester was aiming for it. So. It looks like you're probably right there, Gareth. I think that's exactly what was mm. happening. Stephen coming in, sliding this way. Probably going to be a little bit short, but he's going to have a, a hoop running opportunity with the black anyway. And Greg, how would you counter this if you can't see the black and you're playing the red? How do you how do you mitigate things? It's it's not going to be easy for him. Possibly running from the non non playing side or jaws in it to try and force a jump. But we'll just see how he's, he is trickling up, trying to block the black ball from playing. And it's oh, a beautiful. stroke to get. It is. So and he can obviously Lester, see a lot more of it. Yeah. Well, so Stephen I looks to be Stephen lining has... up for the hoop. He does, doesn't he? He does. Oh, That's it beautiful makes it beautifully. Four for all. Great play, Stephen. But Lester will be first to hoop nine. So Rosie, in this this sort of position, four all, your first two hoop nine, you, you'd you'd say that you would have the advantage. Well, yes, and you, and you would want to be making sure that if you're the first positioning ball or the first lag is what I call it, you you want to make sure that lag is in a running position, and if the opposition feels they've got to shoot at it, well, so be it. But you really should be cleaning up from here. If you're the first ball there, it needed to be absolutely accurate. And I think you, you don't want to have any interaction. You want to be able to walk up and run the hoop. And uh, that that's what would have been ideal. So I assume Stephen's having a good look to see if he's got a shot on that first uh, yellow ball, a nice shot, or if yellow can run the hoop, as we just noticed he was looking, um, ideally in a perfect pattern. Um, Stephen had missed this and Yellow would run the hoop. But if Stephen gets it, then we've got a game on our hands. So absolutely, Rosie. And Greg, the, the often in a golf croquet game, players are trading hoops. Like, you know, the, the, first, the first player to a hoop makes it and then the second player is the, the first to the next hoop and makes it. So you trade. But by the time you get to four all, and that trading is still happening, the advantage to the first player must be increasing all the time. Because the, remember, it's the first up to seven. So as the trades continue, the advantage to the first player must must get, get greater. Do, is, is that the way you feel about it? Yes, and that's where positional play is critical. So being the first ball to the hoop, we've just seen here and witnessed, if, as Rosie was saying, if the ball was in a good hoop running position and the opponent was unable to hit you, it's your point when you take charge to the next one. Whereas we've actually given an opportunity to the opponent and, and, and they've now got a sniff of, of breaking the 4-4 four four and making it 5-4 for themselves. So, yes, yeah, so getting those positions is is really important now with red now and play you sort of got to say that he'll have to have a crack at that hoop yeah and stephen did a good job there of pushing the red uh, another meter and a half away from where it was it now gives lester a sort of four meter sort of shot at the the hoop whereas before it was just a couple of meters so he looks as greg says he's going to have a go at it Oh, great shot. So strong. Absolutely brilliant. And Rosie, uh, Lester hitting that with a, a great amount of force and the ball going all the way up to the top. But as you pointed out, it, it, these players don't worry about being on the northern boundary. 
Well, I, I think ideally you wanted to be closer so that you could actually run that with some control and, and land on the playing side because, as you say, we're trying to break that whole um, trading hoops situation. But um, if you're going to have to sacrifice running the hoop because you've got to do it too softly or you've got to control it, then, yes, they don't mind being in that defensive position. Um, while they don't have a shot, a long shot at the hoop, which is always a disadvantage, they can, to some degree, control the game from behind. It's not ideal, but they can. They're not out of it by having that shot up there. No. No, that, uh, that shot is a good clearing ball. Uh, and for players of this standard, they, they don't mind whether they're clearing over seven, eight, nine yards. So uh, it, it does intimidate the next player going up there. So is Lester doesn't look as if he's worried about black here, Greg. Uh, so clearly just playing the ball up instead of worrying about the black. Would you have been concerned about where the black is? Well, with um, yellow in a hoop running position, it is a good tactic to hit black, but obviously the percentages aren't as high to, in, in execution. Well, then bringing the red ball in is the right move. But we'll just see, it looks like Steve, is he lining up? I think he's lining for the yellow. And I think, may, do, you think oh, do you think maybe there's a chance here, Rosie, that he could promote his black ball to the next hoop as well as clear the yellow? Oh, I think um, Stephen will be um, trying to clear the yellow. <laughs> Definitely be trying to clear the yellow. And I think yeah, anything else does. that comes out of that would be an advantage. But he'll be trying to hit that centre ball so that the black ball is still very active in the play, is still threatening and can lurk around. And, and, you know, that's what's really important when we play clearing shots that that we get that double advantage of moving a ball but making sure that our own ball hangs around and um, applies pressure. That was unfortunate for Lester. He really wanted to have something more useful than a ball sitting out there, that's for sure. So with the, the principle of see hoop, make hoop, we would expect Stephen to oh, go through, but he doesn't. There we go. He Instead, he plays the red. Maybe he couldn't didn't have as full a view of the hoop as, as I thought. Yes, it looks like his body language was saying that he didn't expect, anticipate just snicking that red. He looked like he was, um, he did look like he was going for the hoop. So it's going to be quite tight around hoop 10 here, a little bit more tactical. Uh, not clear hoop running shots for either player yet. Uh, Greg, your thoughts on the pattern that might emerge here? Well, it's um, important for Stephen to level things up here. So a little bit of patience won't go astray. And, and using the court and then the annulations of the court to, to try and work out some, some um, advantages. But um, as you can see now, it, creating a two-on-one situation is usually best. So it's best to be best to hit before being hit is one of the sayings we have. So by getting rid of one of the red or yellow balls um, and creating a two on one, but obviously it looks like here he's, he's trying to try and block. Well, he's going for the hoop. He's going for the hoop. Yeah, because I think that so maybe has... Rosie, there was not really anywhere where the black could have gone um, that would have would have helped. What do you think, Rosie? Yeah, so we're, we're in that in that corner position now where, well, this is something he probably didn't allow for, so that Leicester's going to be able to have a ball in front plus clear blue all the way. So, um, yeah, because, because, he, because Stephen did, he did have the option of clearing the red, which is a, a threatening hoop running ball. So I was sort of half expecting him to do to do that but i suppose he he just felt that if he well he, sometimes you just fancy the look of the hoop don't you a hundred percent and if he did he, his attitude was also that he needed to run the hoop which isn't necessarily a bad attitude to have all right so lester now to, for a 6-4 lead tricky tricky shot angled 
and he clangs into the quadway hoop and the quadway hoop does not yield so these hoops very deeply set into the ground they have square carrots as we call them uh, so they, those are the bits that actually go into the ground and anchor the hoop in the ground here is is nice and firm so that hoop there did a good job of rejecting the slightly uh, misdirected hoop running attempt as Rosie said earlier the tolerance in the hoops is just a credit card width wider than the than the balls themselves so quite difficult oh. Stephen trying to get that yellow out of play so uh, Greg are we going to see here, another hoop? yep um, the black actually touching the yellow so if yellow was to make the hoop in this turn it would be on an onside position and and then and clearly and then bandage would see Lester's now trying to jaws the ball into the hoop and the and yeah. the ball is sort of taking it to the to the other side and it's one of the few times that we've seen a gentle stroke isn't it and, and you can see suddenly the, the character of the lawn coming out Rosie was making the point earlier that we've seen very few blocking shots and I think that's a good example of, of why that has been the case. The, the uh, undulations of the lawn are not conducive to, to that sort of line of play. So Rosie, the, the tactics around here is continue to mesmerise. Uh, Lester going to have a go now? Um, you, yeah, you would think that he's at least going to try and draw it. So Stephen went there so that if Lester does clear him, he can't clear him too far, only to a boundary. Um, and I, yeah, we'll get another angle on that red and see exactly. So that's now a perfect spot for um, blue to run as an in off. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, for, yeah. yeah. So interesting, very yep. interesting to see what you hit. It's going to happen here. Yeah. If Stephen can shift that yellow, I don't know where how far away Stephen is. So. Well, he, he it wouldn't be easy oh, to shift is. the yellow into a position where it couldn't see the blue either, is it? So he. Indeed, so he'll he'll, he'll only go to a in. short side. Just. Yeah. Oh, good shot. Yep. So Lester needs to clip the blue on the left-hand side of it to, or the right-hand side to, to send it down the lawn, which he does beautifully. Well done, Lester. And the curvature of the lawn is taking that even further down. It could have, without the, uh, the character in the lawn, that would have probably gone off the eastern boundary a bit sooner. But as it is, it's perfectly positioned by Lester in corner four. So hindsight's an amazing thing. <laughs> in as much as Stephen now knows he should have cleared the red, obviously. So, yeah. Well, I don't think the red is a a runner, though, Greg. What do you think? No, it, it would be tempting if he can get <clears throat> get a hit on the black ball and get it out of there, because black will just jump red if it mm, goes into the yeah. jaws. So his his yeah. options here is to to more than likely hit the black ball away. He's gonna try oh, he's opened up. up the door. Well, there we go. He's trying to just gently block, but again, the the curvature of the lawn just took it away. Stephen rehearsing this shot, very important one to bring it to five all. And through it goes, five each. Well, an intriguing tactical battle there at hoop number 10. Ends with Stephen levelling things up and Lester plays the first ball to in front or just a little bit short of hoop 11. Very, very interesting. Very different game to the first game of today's play, which was a very quick fire exhibition by Robbie Fletcher. And this one... A lot more interaction, a lot more little delicate stuff around the hoops. And a little promotion here. Fantastic shot by Lester. What a brilliant, brilliant shot there to promote that yellow in. Big 
responsibility now on Stephen to clear it. Seven or eight yards away. Shoots, clips it nicely, takes away the pressure. And Rosie, the blue well placed for a for a shot if uh, Leicester can't clear it now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and this is a, a yeah, this is to a certain degree. Stephen's sort of seeing his opportunities now and and taking them. Um, we saw just before the end of um, hoop ten. And so uh, we, now Rosie, we've got a classic. A a classic situation now where Stephen has a chance of, of making the hoop or clearing the red. And at this level, they're going for the hoop. At, yes. at a lesser level, you might see people clearing the red. This very interesting contrast. Um, I, I think in, if in the, the red way. can't run, it is. But if the red can't run, most players are going to take that hoop on. Oh, dear. Um, I think the wind might be playing a bit more of a part, Gareth. We can see that it's yeah. it's getting quite windy, which is normal for Ken Lee on the weekend. Um, so <laughs> Lester's going to take it as well. <laughs> do you mean the wind doesn't blow so hard during weekdays at Ken Lee? Well, there's a, there's a local uh, myth there that Sunday after, oh, uh, well done, Lester, that Sunday after 11, 12, it starts to get exciting and... Uh, it never fails to do so. <laughs> Even international people who've played at Ken Lee know about the wind on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, it certainly can get very, very fresh and breezy at Ken Lee. There's no doubt about that. So, great hoop by Leicester. Uh, really, really nicely taken. And he was able to trundle the red ball down to towards hoop 12 in a fantastic clearing position. So it's going to be difficult for Stephen to to get the advantage of, of being normally the first player down there. Greg, uh, what's, uh, what's uh, Lester looking at here? Well, again, he's got some options. It's a long way away. Um, he wants to be in a hoop running position. Um, he doesn't want to get too close because he'll just hit, hit away by Stephen. If we go back to this replay, that is a, an acute angle and, and very well executed. And it's, it is one of his strongest shots, which is putting him into the lead. But if we see this yellow ball come into the um, second last hoop, it's coming in quite nice. As you can see, he didn't want to get too close to the ball, to the hoop, because um, Black would just shoot it away. So it's a nice little spot to, to be in. Looks like Blue's got uh, and Rosie, a, a run towards. Rosie, the um, the it seems from the way that the game, the, the play here is developed, that the red can't see the black. Would you say that was true? Uh, um. Yeah, you would think that, that that's something. I'm hoping that Stephen was actually aiming to just dribble that into the jaws um, if he wasn't actually going for the hoop. He, he sort of needed to be, just from the point of view that if he went hard at it, obviously he'd be too far away. If he goes soft at it, then he's got or takes position, then he's just a target. So I'm assuming Stephen... Sorry, I think I might have been on, on mute then. Um, yeah. No, no, I'm no, assuming no, no. Stephen no. would, um, yeah, was trying to actually dribble into the jaws if, if possible. Um, I Lester's think the, probably the, looking the, for the, a spot now. Yeah, the double bad thing for Stephen there was that I think he stymied his clearance shot on the yellow with the black on yellow by putting the the, the blue in so closely too. So difficult now. I mean, Greg, are you? really is the only option here just to block the shot of yellow on the hoop yes you don't want it to be in a hoop running like you need to block it absolutely so whether he can actually get in that position it's hard to tell from this angle but you don't want at this point of time um yeah stephen needs to make this hoop so he he needs to be patient he needs to think about it and execute these shots so that he now pulled up a little bit short. 
Yeah, uh, not quite enough, perhaps. Game, it's very close for Leicester. He's clearly got... This is a great camera angle. This to win the game. Five yards out. Oh, he doesn't oh. take it. The black, the black did its job. That's often what happens with yeah. those shots too. It's a bit of a distraction. Um, having that ball, even though it wasn't perfectly placed to block the hoop, some players find it as a real, real distraction. It's just this target and you it's very hard to get your eyes away from it and to get, refocus on the hoop. So, as you say, it had the desired effect. So, Greg, where does um, Stephen go with this blue? Because almost wherever he goes, red can clear it. Yes, and he, to go in deep is very wise. He, he could have wired it from red as well, but he's in a hoop running position, and now Lester needs to try and block blue from running the hoop. And that's exactly what's he's happened. He's done that nicely. Oh. Yeah. And we saw Stephen do a, a, a great jump shot earlier from in the, yesterday. Where, so he's perfectly capable of jumping that blue from that distance. Whether he'll still be there is up to Leicester's next shot. And Leicester skews that one wide. Now, would you think, Rosie, that Le uh, that Stephen will will be trying to to jump with the blue now? Definitely not. I don't. Knowing Stephen, <laughs> I would suggest that that Stephen will be looking to see where yellow is and what sort of a shot it's got. He will uh, take some great position there with blue, knowing. Uh, sorry, he will clear red. Pardon me. He'll be clearing the red because the red's the next one to play uh, with the idea of staying close. He may have a shot. Uh, we can't see from this angle, but he may actually have a shot on the hoop. No, no he's you were right about the clearance. The red is gone. Yeah. And that now means that the, the black is controlling the territory around the hoop although the red hasn't gone very far Greg no so he's got to be very careful here I mean whether we leave it in a wide position and hit the ball away next time or we go deep and into a hoop running position but it um, looks like he's he's going to go you can't make the hoop unless you're in front of it so he's making a, a, a position where you know, he's putting the pressure back on Stephen to to do something about it it's almost the opposite like position Stephen, to what yeah. we had before, isn't it? Where, yes, where Leicester yes. was, was totally. <laughs> Stephen was deep and, and Leicester came in tight. And now it's, it's looking like going round the other way. Unless, of course, and, Stephen and decides again, to clear Stephen. the red. Which he does. And the red... Ooh, oh, great almost, clearance. Great. Yeah, almost going into the jaws of, of the previous hoop, which would have been a very nice outcome for him. But the proximity to that other previous hoop also means that there are more places to hide um, when you're yeah. Steven. So it's, it's, it's good. Anything that hampers that a shot, a clearance shot, or a clearance on the, or a hoop shot is great. Stevens so and blue um, Stevens backing himself to hit the yellow. He is. He's put the blue into a position which really has a target on it if the yellow is still there. So he's saying, I'm going to hit the yellow away with the black ball on the next shot after this. And that looks like it might have been a, an attempt to, to block the transit of the black. Let's see. Okay, a lot riding on this stroke. So Greg, uh, about nine yards away, he's got to hit the yellow. Yes, well, uh, with blue in such a good hoop running position, and then this this will just, and Stephen needing this point to survive, um, he needs to hit it. 
So that's that's now put the pressure back on Leicester to, to get rid of that ball. He did yep. need yep. to get that yellow a bit further, probably. Um, ideally, that needed to go right out um, because we don't want to give anybody any short shots at uh, at this level of play. Yeah, he certainly opened the door to Leicester. And Leicester doesn't go through the door. He actually skittles off to the right-hand side. And Stephen now with an opportunity to level things up and take us to hoop 13. Big moment. Pressure on now, right in front. Great camera angle. And we go to hoop 13. And it'll be red first oh, up there. Good. Red what a great now really interesting to get a a sudden death hoop now Leicester first up there greg important to put this on the playing side oh absolutely and with the lawn with it um you know you just want to make sure you hit it that little bit harder just to guarantee a hoop running uh, position on the other side this makes it interesting now because the next ball so whether because the yellow ball uh, missed everything, it will presumably go to the penalty spot on the other side. We'll see how that develops. If you remember, see Leicester picking up the the yellow now, and I think that Stephen will send him off to the naughty corner um, or the naughty mid spot on the uh, on the left of our screen. So, Rosie, the position of the the red and the black there. What do you make of that up at the top? Well, the red's quite delicious. The blacks, um, I mean, the, the, I think the standard of um, the standard answer to the red's position is is quite often to either shoot or to put yourself underneath if you can, but you must be on the playing side because we know that many a game has been won from the boundary at this point, um, and it ultimately comes down to a hoop shooting match if you get engaged in a tit for tat moving away situation um it's for you really needed to make that sure that red was in that lovely lovely position that your answer was to either move it from that position or get a better position um well because yeah we're all here now and red should run this hoop yeah so should. as rosie says um basically what's happened is that Leicester has been given the opportunity to win the match with this three and a bit yard shot. So he'll do that. Beautiful. Well played, Leicester. Very nice. Heartbreaking for Stephen, who fought so valiantly and uh, gave us that fantastic hoop 13 finish. But as Rosie was pointing out, if it gets to a shooting match at the at hoop 13 and you are the first one to have the shot, with that sort of length, then uh, you've got a very, very good chance. So, Greg, uh, a, a, a great game. Um, any special moments in there for you? I think the fact that it was so close um, towards the end, it was a, a hoop for hoop um, type game. <clears throat> and, and, you know, the, the fact that they, um, towards the end there, made sure that they were in, in the match was, was really, really good. I, I think both players have settled down um, and they'll be on fire for the next match. Like they, they've got their, they're, they're ready for, for, for the next one. So it'll be great entertainment to come. Well, exactly. And uh, for those viewers who have just joined us, we've had two games this morning, uh, the first one and a half hours of play. And in the first game, Robbie Fletcher was just on fire, seven nil. Uh, victory over Leicester. Leicester didn't really do anything wrong. It's just that Robbie just just shot from distance and he was making seven, eight, nine yard, ten hoops. And uh, there's nothing you can do when someone is doing that. So the state of the, the match, uh, the Owen Edwards Golf Croquet Challenge, is that uh, Robbie is on four wins, Leicester on three wins. And uh, Stephen absolutely not indicating the the quality of his play during this tournament sadly has has yet to trouble the scorers but that as i say is not because of uh, any lack of brilliance on his part it's just that the other two players have 
just been fantastic at taking their opportunities. So, Rosie, um, some intriguing play this morning. Uh, what have you taken from it? Um, I suppose for me it's the it's the utter contrast between the two games and it's not to say one was any better than the other but it was an, a really interesting indication I think if you um, are comparing tactics if you're adapting to conditions um, if you accept the fact that some of as we say some of the tight positional shots are going to be difficult on a lawn like this that you really need to take your opportunities and absolutely amazingly um robbie has the skill to take those uh, opportunities but so do a lot of players so again backing yourself um making that decision that this is what you want to do um and having a plan really does seem to work out so stephen does this wonderful jump that also when you're doing a jump with a ball in the hoop ideally you're trying to make sure that opponent's ball stays there because then it's stymied for the next shot so um yeah the 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 comparison and the contrast in some of the decisions that were made really really um amazing to see and i think players taking away from this can have a look at what they think they should work on in their own game so rosie i think you what you said there you you really hit the nail on the head and a, a very strong theme um, both the day's commentary from you has been this idea that players should not shirk away from 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 trying to take opportunities as they present themselves. That often what we see at at club level is people not having the confidence to to go for the hoops in the same way that we've seen these players this weekend. And you've been advocating that people should back themselves. They should have a go if they can see the hoop. It's an opportunity they should try and take it and there's no shame in 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 failing that because the 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 the, the reward is is uh, very palpable is, is that how you'd summarize what you've been trying to say yes if if part of your game is that you actually want to um, win and you want to work on your skills to do so having that confidence to the best players in the world the winning players in the world run the hoops first. So that is something I yep. think we really need to focus on. If you're improving your game, if you're improving your game, then that's something that you, and you want to win and progress, then that's something you really should be looking at. The tactics that they use at the top level of play are just sensational for people who want to improve. Yeah. Well, Rosie, thank you very much for your contribution this weekend. It's been fantastic to have your insight uh we're lucky enough now to welcome uh one of australians uh, australia's world champions alex verge uh good morning alex you'll be taking over from from rosie uh so uh how how are you today alex well, maybe just waiting for alex to get her uh, headphones mm. sorted out there, maybe. Um, and Greg, uh, thank you very much as well. I think uh, I, I mean I think maybe both stay online for the moment because I'm not sure that uh, Peter, our next commentator, has has joined us yet. Uh, but certainly Alex is here, and oh, Peter is here. Okay, so we'll say we'll say farewell to Greg too. Greg, uh, thank you very much for your contribution, uh, and. Uh, Thanks very much for introducing us to the Croquet Academy and the Croquet Magazine as well. Uh, maybe if we could have a reminder about that fantastic publication that is available for all interested in the sport to download, totally free, of course. And uh, it, it really is a, a brilliant resource for individual players and clubs alike. So, Alex, welcome. How are you today? Well, uh, Peter, you're with us, though. I'm with you. Hey, there <laughs> we go. So, so Peter, have you been able to catch any of this morning's play? Uh, no, I haven't, unfortunately. Um, I have a mix-up with my KA subscriptions. <laughs> but uh, uh, I noticed that, well, um, that uh, Robert beat Leicester 7-0. 
So that must have been fairly uh, interesting. It was. Well, it was, and and it was one of those classic uh, seven nil uh, victories, which really are not a fair reflection of of the quality of the game itself. It's just happens sometimes, doesn't it? I mean, I'm sure that in your illustrious career, you've had the odd seven nil loss and and you thought oh well i can't really remember doing anything particularly wrong in that game and yet i've i've walked off the lawn seven nil down would that be the case it is um it can just happen that you know it's a good hard fight battle for every hoop but you just don't happen to get any of them yeah it's very it's, unfortunate. Uh, it's an amazing thing but equally it's really interesting that that croquet is a game which is not over until the seventh hoop is scored and therefore even if you are six nil down you can still claw it back and i think it's interesting for people that are new to the game to realize that that unlike a, a game of rugby or, or or soccer or something where a, a, a team that's a very long way ahead can run down the clock and and and, and the, the result becomes inevitable towards the last few minutes of the game in croquet that doesn't happen in croquet the the result of the game is always in the balance uh and peter you must have you must have won a few games uh from a from a big deficit as well yes i mean we often say that it's 50 percent skill and 50 percent mental and what can happen is you're way behind, but suddenly you start getting a couple of hoops and the pressure just switches to the lead player. And they're suddenly, you know, thinking, oh, he's coming, he's coming. And they, they then start <laughs> bombing shots and doing stuff. And it can be very one-sided in reverse. That's right. Uh, and as you say, it's a horrible feeling to be pursued like that, isn't it? When you're when you've been ahead and suddenly the opposition is creeping up on you and you it, it's 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 like being the, the cyclist who's leading the race. It's you can't see what's behind you and you and it, a much more unnerving sort of uh, feeling. But we've had a great uh, a great contrast in the games this morning we uh, that that incredible power display by robbie where he was just mesmerizing in his control of the, of the hoop running uh and then followed by a more tactical battle in the second game between lester and stephen uh which went to a very uh, interesting 13th hoop so the the match scores at the moment four to to robbie uh three to leicester um the the replay from the the the, the previous game you can see there a a nice shot by by stephen uh, doing a nice clearing shot uh lots of tactics lots of intricate play around the hoops lots of decisions to be made and uh leicester uh, coming out 7-6 in the end. So, um, Kate, you're joining us, I believe. Um, I'm here. Yes, I've been here for yeah. all along, but I okay. have been just watching oh. quietly. Oh, I just um. got a message that Kate's on. <laughs> and so, oh, I think, I think that uh, they meant that Alex is on. So, Alex, can we hear you now? No, no, still nothing from uh, Alex there. So we'll enjoy this replay of um, Hoop 11 from uh, the previous game. Lister playing in towards that menacing black ball there, clearly. So Peter, uh, we... We saw some very uh, interesting tactics around the, the hoop 11, 12. Um, up until that point, the, uh, the, uh, the players have been trading hoops. Uh, and we were starting to talk about the advantage that the first player has. The, uh, the, the player going first on a particular hoop is the first to get their ball often into a running position. And the, the longer that trading hoops goes on, the more the advantage for the for the first player becomes. Is that is that something that you think about when you're playing? Yes, I mean, there's a uh, analysis called the cow cowing analysis that uh, Jenny Clark's been promoting, and you actually uh, code every shot that a player makes in a game 
and then you record whether it was successful or not successful, which does perhaps involve a bit of mind reading at times. But one of the interesting results of doing that analysis is that about 60% of your shots are just to position. They're not clearing, they're not running hoops, they're not jumping. Um, and so when you realize that, you know, two thirds of your shots are actually just going to position, it means that you really should be practicing being able to get exactly where you want to go as often as you can. Uh, and getting down in front of the next hoop is one of the crucial positions. Um, particularly if you're trying to actually also block or do something at the same time. But I often yeah, tell so people that, that, that you're better ten foot short than a foot past. Yes, that uh, that initial shot to the to the to the next hoop, as you say, Peter, is is absolutely crucial. And Peter's advice there is to it much better to be uh in front if even if it's a, a long way in front than them behind 